In this video, we will present an idea for properly bonding the negative side of the DC power system to the chassis in the RV or trailer. Negative site bonding is an attractive practice for many trailer builders as it has an economic advantage. Not only does it take less physical wire to make this type of bond, but the size of the other wires used in a wiring harness, for example, can be reduced. The primary reason for this is because the chassis is so massive electrically that there are virtually no voltage losses along the chassis. And many taillight manufacturers encourage this practice as shown here. The ground wire is already pre-fit with a screw lug intended for attaching to the chassis. While it is a good practice to have a single master ground bond in an RV, the practice of grounding certain circuits, such as the brake system, should be avoided. The primary issue is the likelihood of corrosion in the grounding bond, which will affect the operation of the circuit. No RVer would want their trailer to have their brakes compromised due to a corroded ground connection. Faulty ground connections are all too common. In my RV at least, the brake wires luckily are not bonded to the ground. Rather, there are two wires to each brake. And at the single chassis bonding point, it is in a protected area from the outside environment so that it will not get wet or corroded. And then a bit of battery terminal protecting is used to protect the bond. However, there is a much better way to do this, which I will show you. Unfortunately, you'll never find an RV manufacturer doing this because of costs. This is just a piece of steel. And they've ground off a spot so we have good electrical contact. And then just put a zinc plated bolt into the bar. And then just mimicked a ground wire. Back when I did a lot of EMI work, and EMI stands for electromagnetic interference, we use a product that we called silver epoxy. And you can still buy this. This has been around for 40 years or so. And this is by a company called Adam Adhesives. And they have different formulations depending on how much conductivity you need. But essentially, it is epoxy infused with silver. Therefore, it actually becomes conductive. If there was a ground wire that went to a metal building and we put a braided cable between the two so we would ground the building, we would put this on the bolts that we use to establish the ground. This is rather expensive. This little packet here is probably enough to do one of these. And it runs around seven to eight dollars. I also run across this stuff called wire glue and this whole thing was about ten dollars. And I've never used this stuff before. I'm not too sure how well it works. It's only a one part. It's got some bad reviews, but we're going to try it anyway. So we will start by opening this packet. And it, as I said, is in two pieces. And you're supposed to be able to squeeze them together and break the little division between the two packets. And that may be easier said than done. Ah, there we go. And then you recommend you run it back and forth like a table edge or sharp object at least 40 times. So bear with me while we do that. All right, that was 40 times. I think we can call this good. And probably should have wore gloves. So we'll try to put this around. And I don't know if I'm going to have enough to do the whole bolt or not. But we'll see. And by the way, there are several companies that make this type of stuff. Uh, GC Chemicals, this is called Atom Adhesives, and there are several more. So it's a pretty common product. The only real commonality is that it's all expensive. But on the other hand, if you only have one or two ground connections to do, it's a manageable expense. In this, we have to stir up. It's kind of separated. It's reasonably mixed. Of 
this definitely makes more of a mess than the silver epoxy. You know, it's more runny. All right, so I'll set it here for now, and I'll kind of clean up as much as I can. After letting the sealants cure for a day, we see that the silver epoxy has hardened. The liquid wire has also hardened, but much of it has run off, so right away I see this as suitable for horizontal level surfaces only. And a quick check with a multimeter, we can see that we have good continuity for both examples. I then set the metal bar under a dripping source of water for a week, and here's what happened. You can see with the silver epoxy, I probably should have had a little more quantity because where it was thin, it rusted through. But there are still plenty of areas where it's thick and there's no rust. On the liquid wire side, it really doesn't look too good. However, when we used a multimeter to check the ohm readings, they both look good. And when compared to the initial readings, they were virtually unchanged. My conclusion is that the silver epoxy is far superior to the liquid wire as long as a sufficient quantity is used. After all, it is designed for this purpose. The liquid wire is acceptable for horizontal surfaces, especially if you can protect it from abrasion with a sealant such as a general purpose silicone or TV. Check your ground connections. If you have any unprotected connections, especially if your trailer manufacturer cheapened out in critical areas such as the brake circuit, I would recommend using this technique to protect them. And the real scary thing is that even if the trailer manufacturer did the job correctly, in any future repairs by a dealer or RV technician, they could start adding grounds if they don't have the issue correctly diagnosed. This happened to me. I had a brake problem in my trailer, took it to a RV repair shop as it was a warranty issue, and ultimately they did not have the competence to diagnose the problem correctly, and they started adding grounds. This was just not acceptable to me, and I forced them to stop work on the trailer, and I ended up fixing it myself. Click on the link in the upper right hand corner, or go to the description below for the link to my webpage where you will find more information.